Here we're going to go box and bands, and I'm very happy for the first time to be uh, joined with Tony Brown, Superfly Tony Brown, or Anthony Brown, should I say? Um, no, 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 only the only the National Stadium call me that. Tony, <laughs> Tony Brown, and everyone else. Uh, finally caught you. Finally got you, Tony. You've been a busy man over the last year. Yeah, um, I've been a bit of an enigma to you the last while. You're going to catch me on a. I'm just never we our schedules never seem to link up, unfortunately. But uh, here we are, so yeah. it's good to finally get to chat to you. It's great. It's three three fights already. Um, it's mm. crazy how, how the time's flown by. Um, how, how have you enjoyed uh, your experience so far in the program? Albeit a very different first three pro fights to what anyone else would have experienced probably in the past. Yeah, I mean, like. Um, I love it. I love it so far. Uh, the program really suits me. Um, I get going, you know, my last round, I'm, I'm in full flight, you know, and, and uh, I've left my last couple of fights um, with another, I could have done double what I did in there, you know, so um, the rounds are suiting me um, and we're seeing that and sparring that. Obviously, yeah, the, the shows I've been on have been all around Europe and more or less behind closed doors, so... I haven't been able to bring my fans and that with me and my mates and all the rest. Mm. But, um, you know, it's like, obviously it's it's not uh, ideal not being able to bring your support with you, but uh, I'd consider myself very blessed to be in the position I'm in. I'm being able to go in and still be active and get these fights. Um, and I'm getting good fights. I'm getting good learning fights. Um, you know, I haven't had really... Well, um, like my debut was a last minute change uh, the night before we had a opponent replacement. But, um, you know, I've agreed to fight good guys who are coming to coming to win, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm learning. I'm learning every fight and getting better and better. So uh, I think I've uh, got a long way to go. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying the journey so far. With the experience that you've had now in those last three fights, um, and obviously traveling now all, although there hasn't been really crowds at them as well all that do you wish you had turned over a turner uh, it's all uh, should have could have would have at the end of the day you know um, you know you're exactly where you're meant to be at the time you're there to be honest um, you know I, I have no quarrels that I stayed at amateur as long as I did, you know, I had a, I had a good uh, experience there and um, some good and some bad lessons, you know, some, some, were, some were hard lessons, but uh, they, they've all stood to me um, and uh, I'm in a great place now um, with my coach, Stephen. Um, you know, we're, we're really back on the rise again and uh, I'm starting to box the way he had always envisioned me to box. So, um, and we're doing a lot of we're doing a lot of stuff in the gym that's really paying off, um, and I think you know the pro game. I was always headed for the pro game, but it, it, it's now's the right time, you know. So um, no, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any regrets and mm. not turning over sooner. See the way you 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 were kind of speaking there, how you you're taking good fights now um, so early. You were someone when you were an amateur. You know, you always had your you always had your aim and your, your sight set for the stars. You always wanted to aim for Olympics. And that's what you were thinking of kind of hanging on. Um, mm. With those type of goals in hand, I, I imagine I know that's going to be very similar to what your goals are in the program to get very, very to the very, very top. Are you looking to be moved quickly or are you, are you just comfortable just going through learning fights um, before you? Yeah, like, yeah. I want to move quickly. Like my my first three fights were six rounders. I didn't want to do a four rounder. I want to get to an eight rounder as soon mm. as possible. And um, the way we're looking at it, where you know Connor Slater is doing a great job with me, and obviously Star Boxing are looking after looking after me, but from afar because we can't fight in the states at the moment. But um, the way I'm looking at it is, you know, I every time I fight, I want to fight guys with different styles, different body shapes. But guys who are a little bit better every time so you're climbing the rankings. You know, I don't want to be fighting five or six guys who have de- haven't won in their last 30 fights. You know, I want to be going in against guys who are coming with a real uh, ambition to win. And um, that's going to progress me 
in my own boxing, but also it's going to help me climb the rankings. Um, and I do have my goals set. I have, you know, targets that I want to hit by certain time periods. Um, so that's all part of it, um, is, is going through the process this way and, and having your targets and making sure that you're hitting certain milestones along the way, you know. Uh, see the way you're saying that you kind of have a, a plan at milestones and some lads, because because you you were, you were very ambitious in, in amateurs, you obviously, ha- obviously have a very clear goal. And some others that they're, they're kind of jo- getting into the pro ranks, but they're not really sure what their level is. Has Stars Boxing kind of spoke to you and set out a plan, and Connor obviously as well, saying, Rick, this is the route we're going to go down. Um, like, if, like, are we going to overstep the mass level? Are we going to fight the mass level? Are we going to go into European title belts at this point? Do you ha- have they kind of given you a, a plan as per se like that? Yeah, yeah. And my coach Stephen as well. You know, there's, there's, um, we want to get to, we want to get up to eight and oh, ten and oh, hopefully coming into next year. Um, obviously, that's uh, a lot of that is depending on how things go with travel restrictions and. A lot of uncontrollables there for us, but uh, what we can control, we will, and that's that's what we're aiming for. And uh, there's guys we're looking at. There's some good net, good guys we're looking at setting up fights with in the states when we do get the all kit to get over there. And um, guys that I'm very confident that I'd be. Um, so yeah, no, we we're, we have a plan of how we're going to get there and uh, what fights we want to take and what way we're going to do it. Um, and the, with with the way things are at the moment, um. You know, there's no shows happening domestically for the foreseeable, and uh, unless you're linked in with certain managements, with certain man- management companies, um, it can be difficult to get fights over in the UK as well. So the way we're going about it at the moment is just we're going to fight on a couple of these shows in Europe, um, get some good names, build up the ranking, and then uh, when we get to the states, we'll be ready to take uh, some good opponents and hopefully be looking at the first the start of some titles. You know. You fought at one point at, at 91 kilo in mm. amateur as a heavyweight, and now you're fighting at yeah. or middleweight now as a yeah as a, as a pro. How have you found like getting down to that weight? And I can imagine you must on the day of the fight, you must feel absolutely huge and like a massive advantage now when you're fighting. Um, how, how have you found that whole yeah. process? Yeah, like I was, I was always big when I boxed that light heavy. Anyway, I'm I'm quite tall, um, but uh, I be slim enough, you know. So I, I I hold the weight like I'm I'm not a I'm not a particularly stocky guy. I'm quite slim, mm. um. So when I did go up to ninety one, I only ever got up to about eighty eight kilos, and I did put on quite a bit of size. Um, I think that was a big part of. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You can hear me all right, yeah. yeah. Sorry, it just uh, was breaking up for me there. I think that was a big part of why in my last um, senior championship, why I underperformed as, the way I did was because I came down from 91 and um, I just didn't go about my wake up properly. Um, and the way it was done that year was it was done in the space of a week and I just didn't perform. You know, I felt flat and not sharp. And all my training then was geared towards making weight instead of actually just focusing on my boxing. Now I'm working with uh, Declan Gilmore. He's he's uh, my nutritionist, and I I have um Dublin Food Company looking after my meals. So, you know, like I start my way cut like weeks out, and I do it right. Um, and I take all the steps necessary to get me down as low as I can naturally, and then the last little bit is just about the getting the water weight out. And obviously now with the pros, you have the weigh in the day before, so I have the luxury of, you know draining that fluid out of me and then I can just rehydrate and refuel myself for the fight. So, um, you know, my last the fight in Spain there in November, I weighed in 78 kilos and the next day I put on like over a stone and I was solid. Like it wasn't, I didn't feel um, bloated or anything, you know, it was uh, all my, my muscles absorbed at all. So, um, yeah, definitely the way I'm doing my weight now is, is the right way to do it. And, uh, you know, Maybe a, maybe my amateur career could have turned out different if I had I had this information back then. But listen, that's neither here nor there. We we are where we are now. So yeah. How, how have you found? I, I've seen you've been sparring quite a few pros lately, uh, Paddy McCrory, mm. amongst others. Uh, how have you found that whole experience? Like fighting, like you really are in this game. You really are sparring men, and the objective is now in this game is 
you're not point scoring. You're literally trying to take each other's heads off. Like, how have you how have you found that now? Um, especially with the longer rounds and whatnot. The whole the whole yeah. I've, I've 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 had some great sparring. Um, you know, I had some great sparring with Jason Quigley and the McKennas and I and Connor Coyle and a lot of good guys. Um, in the country and uh, yeah, like it's a different ball game now. You're 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 in there and you're trying to. You're trying to inflict as much damage as you can, and it's uh, it's not about point scoring and and looking good and getting out of the way. It's about standing in there and really uh, really um, enforcing yourself on the other on the other guy and dominating. So, um, I've had really great sparring with some top guys, and uh, it's really bringing me on massively. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm my my engine is getting better and better. So. Um, I'm really enjoying it, and uh, you know, again, really lucky to have such such a uh, good people to bar within the country, especially with what we're going through. You know, it's it's uh, it's very fortunate that we can continue to work with the lockdown and all that. Yeah. How have you found the little uh, the, the differences between the sports, like the, the kind of like the dark arts in terms of like there's a story Joel Calzaghi spoke about when he when he first turned pro he was fought on the undercard of uh, Lennox Lewis and Frank Bruno and obviously he was very very good amateur like well decorated and um, he said within the first minute this guy put his head down and like basically headbutted him and cut him and he said he just looked at the referee like right so are you going to do something and the referee literally looked at him and went welcome to the pro game like have you had any experiences yeah. like that? Uh, yeah, well, like my fight in Spain was against a guy, you know, and he wasn't a boxer, but he he came in there to take my head off, you know, and mm. there was no like he just came at me like like a raging bull, um, and you know when you when you're fighting longer rounds, like it's that can, that can be a that that can be a more effective way of fighting is when guys come at you like that, they can have a little bit of success. So you have to when you get in there, it is ruthless and it's it's not. Um, the referee's not going to come and break it every time you get in a clinch, and the referee is 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 going to have a, it has a much more standoffish approach in the pro game than in the amateurs, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, you have to learn to fight at all quarters and to be geared up to trade in every distance in the ring, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. So, and and that suits me as well because that's something that Stephen always brought to the table was Stephen's a very good pad man at working us uh, in closer and middle distances and teaching us. As you said, some of the dark arts. So um, you know, it's it's good it's good now to be able to to use that. Whereas on the amateurs, I was never able to work in those distances effectively because it would always be broken up and uh, it was effective. A lot of it was effectively long range point scoring type boxing, you know. Mm. So um, no, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit uh, nitty gritty, you know. Yeah, oh, it's great. Like and- Andre Ward was the, was the king of it. Like if you just the stuff he used to do. Like if you watch him against um, Kovalev the second time, if you watch every time that they clinch, and Kovalev is in the middle of the ring, uh, you watch him. Andre Ward always maneuvers himself in the clinch back into the middle and pushes him out to take centre ring yeah. every single time that they hold each other. Just yeah, like little that. things like that. Like uh, yeah, like it's you know it, it's about being like like it's about. Being, you know, you, you you have to be dirty in there and you have to be nasty in there. And, and I suppose sometimes it's about knowing what you can get away with and, and uh, knowing how to do things without, uh, you know, costing yourself a point or getting a, getting a warning. Uh, I imagine another reason why you want to move quick is because one thing I've always experienced when I'm interviewing people like who've had decorated amateur careers like you, when they turn over immediately, they've really struggled with the whole uh, journeyman concept concept of someone in there trying to survive. Um, it's different for people who haven't had much of an amateur career. But yeah. you've gone from fighting this high, high level to people are trying to win and then you're fighting someone who's trying to survive. And uh, that can be really frustrating for, for people like yourself. Um is that one of the reasons as well why you didn't you wanted to move quicker? Uh I like to be honest, with you, I just like one of the big things as well for me was, you know, I'm twenty six now and you know, I haven't like you haven't got a whole lot of time in, in uh, the pro boxing game. It's not a it's not a very long career and uh fighting guys like that is not is not gonna teach you anything. Yeah, it might be nice to knock out a few guys who are levels below you and have stoppages on your record but 
Um, you know, at the end of the day, when I go over to the States, like, you know, he's you're signed with Starbucks and then you're their racehorse. They're not going to put you in the ring with a donkey. They're going to put you in the ring with another racehorse. So you want to be ready when it comes to race day. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's why it's, I think it's important now to be getting these fights that are going to prepare you and you're, you're getting the rounds and you're, you're feeling that, what it's like to be working in those six rounds and what it's like to be pushed a little bit. And, you know, a guy who's, who's not going to just back up and let you have the win, like, you know. Um, I think a lot of guys maybe go through that and fight guys who are more or less coming there to give them the win. And then when they do have to step up, it's it's a, it's a big shock and um, it, guys can crumble then, you know. So um, I want to be, like, properly mentally and physically ready for when I do step up. Yeah. Right. Well, Tony, we actually got a lot in there, but um, I really appreciate your yeah. time. Really appreciate it for squeeze, squeezing me in uh, into your into your schedule today. So, no, thanks. Thank you for having me, man. No, uh, really appreciate it. And hopefully, there'll be many more interviews to come uh, down the line. 100%. Uh, hopefully, the next time I speak to you, it'll be in person after a fight, uh, which would be great. Yeah, 100%, man. Definitely be great to see you. All right. Thanks very much, Tony. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. See you later.